Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode. Today, as you have probably been able to tell, we're going to trials. We've rigged the trailer, we've de-rigged the boat. No, we've not rigged the trailer. The trailer has got boats on it that have been de-rigged, ready to go down south. So this weekend, as I mentioned in the previous video, the trials themselves are one day only. 1900 meter time trial in the morning and then in the afternoon, it's a lovely side-by-side -side race that is seeded from the 1900 meter time trial. But that's later on. This video is going to be a multiple day video like the previous one at the GB Rowing Start Camp. This is going to be the GB Rowing Trials and this is the non-Olympic Trials. Basically the Olympic team is pretty much selected from last year's team. So this one is the people outside of the team seeing how we can do against each other. So now we've had a little bit of fun this morning on the water. We've had a little bit of fun rigging the boats and putting them on the trailer and now it's time to have a chilled out day and head down south again i'll be going through some little tips and tricks that i like to use on the travel day on the testing day preparing for different tests and sometimes it can vary a little bit from the water water from the air to the water but hopefully you guys enjoy the journey with me so let's get to it made it into the vehicle on the way down south after a lovely delay today unfortunately enterprise that we were supposed to be renting the van from decided that the people that had the van that we were going to use were more important than us so they were like nah nah no van so we'll be waiting a few hours tom has magnificently found us a vehicle from somewhere and we're now driving down south yes <laughs> but now we've got an enjoyable 600 hours to get there so we can go and do some rowing on the water based place. <laughs> because remember, rowing is a rowing sport. Oh yeah! And we're here at Tibby's Services to get some delicious food because remember food is feeling very important on a travel day especially when you're close to testing close to close to racing to keep your body primed and ready to go important again like the last journey a little ball whether it's a tennis ball a hockey ball a, probably not a basketball just a small one that can be easily portable easily portable just to stick under your thigh under your foot on your quads rolling your arms rolling your shoulders your neck while you're in a vehicle whether it's a plane whether it's a train or whether it's the magnificent steed that is the minibus that we are taking down to trials this weekend. So this is stop is sort of usually the midway stop. And it's actually quite late in the day due to our initial delay. So it's 6 p.m. We would usually want to hit this stop around 2.33 p.m. so we can get down at a reasonable time. But it looks like we're gonna have a later one today. So 
trying to stay fueled, stay hydrated, stay rested while we get down. So let's get back into the minibus, fill up with some fuel for itself, not just food, but also fuel, and get transporting further down south for you. <laughs> And we've made it into the hotel after a long travel day today and the ball, whatever it is, the portable ball, came in handy. Just a little bit of massaging in the minibus and just being able to relax a little bit. I've actually, another tip for transport, which I didn't actually do last time, is bringing a pillow. So for sleeping on in a bed or also making the journey a lot more comfortable, whether it's on a plane, a train, or just a vehicle in general, just having something a little bit of soft, whether it's a travel pillow or just an actual pillow to cuddle up into and make the positions more comfortable. Because generally, so I am six foot nine and a bit bigger, a bit wider than an average person, so it can be a bit more difficult to get into a comfortable position, but using a pillow, whether it's under your, behind your back, or using the ball as well to massage as well throughout the journey so you're not sitting still for too long can help make the journey that little bit more comfortable. But it's a little bit later than we would have liked to arrive, almost 10.30 p.m. So now it's time to get some well aired shut eye so we can hit training tomorrow at Dorney Lake where the 2012 Olympics were held. So that's where the trials will be held. So we'll be training there over the next couple of days in preparation for the trials themselves. So, and also we did take tests to make sure we were all good to travel, especially together in the minibus. Yes, we were spread apart, but still quite close. So we were all tested negative there. So absolutely fantastic. And now it is time for some sleep. So I'll see you tomorrow. And we've made it to Dorney Lake. The Lamborghini, name yet to be determined, has been rigged up, ready to get on the water, which is behind this building over there. And it's interesting because the last time I was here, when was the last time I was here? Uh, I don't know. It would have been a while ago, that's for sure. And it would have been definitely in a sweet boat, so either probably an eight, a four, or a pair. <laughs> So it's a bit different now, the occasion is different as well, instead of a race that we're having before, it's trials this time, but today we're not doing trials yet, we've got a few days yet before we get to do that, so we're going to get in the water and do a little bit of prep, just getting used to the course and having some fun while we get the travel out our legs. So let's get on the water, are ye? And we've finished the Szechuan Nans for today. A little bit wet this morning and then it has brightened up into this lovely day today to get on the water. The session is just a little bit of prep, getting used to the water, like I said earlier. Not been on this for a long time and it's quite different to a Strathclyde Park or Ockenstary on the canal. And it's good just to 
get a little bit of a refresh, a little bit of getting used to the course that you will be racing down in preparation for the race that you might have coming up. So for the rest of the day, it's just about chilling out, relaxing, shooting some b-ball outside of school and all that. <laughs> but fueling up, because remember food is fuel, post that session and then trying not to sit and do nothing, but also trying not to do too much because Yes, you'll probably, before a race, you're going to feel antsy, you're going to feel like you want to do something, you're going to feel like you've got a lot of energy, but you don't want to necessarily spend a lot of that energy. You want to reserve some of that energy for putting their maximum yam in the races that you might have coming up. Oh, yeah! So now it's time to go get some fuel. Oh, oh, oh absolutely delicious. Right. And we've had a little bit of a nightmare while we're going to get some food, because remember, food is fuel. We've got a lovely... Thing in the wheel so no more driving until we get the wheel slash tire fixed and unfortunately the flat tire is still on so coach Tom is going to stay behind and look after the vehicle and get it fixed while we go back to the hotel fuel up and get rested Good luck, Tom. So hopefully see you soon. And we're back in the hotel room after fueling up, after a little bit of a nap. And like I said earlier, it's about sitting still, but not sitting too still. So working on a little bit of the vlog stuff here on the computer after a bit of issues here, but it seems to be working now. And then we're going to go a little bit of a walk, but not too long of a walk. Just to, again, get the legs moving, but not anything too extraneous. So, that will be it for today, and I'll see you tomorrow where there's a little bit different because we're not actually going to be able to get on the water. We're going to deal with that tomorrow because that's a future cam problem, aren't you? And we've made it to the next day, the day before racing today. Unfortunately, the Dorney Lake is being used for a triathlon or some other event where we can't actually get on the water to row. And remember, rowing is a rowing sport and rowing needs water so we can't get on there, so we can't row on the boats and we can't get in the Yamagini to prep for trials on the water. So, the next best thing, we're on bay in front of the hotel to get a little bit of the heart going, get the legs moving, and a little bit of the effort, because you can't really get the, the checkers so much in that you would be in a single because there's only one handle. There's not two, because sculling is two oars, not one like sweeping. But it's good to get out here in the fresh air and do a little bit of work. But it's starting to rain. Water may be part of rowing, but when it's falling from the sky, it doesn't quite help on the rowing machine. So we're going to pack away the rowing machines after about 8k of bursts and paddling that we would have probably been doing on the water anyway. And then we're going to get some food because remember, food is fuel. And then discuss the day before racing preparation. <laughs> So we've made it to the day before race day and what can we do today to make ourselves as fast as possible for tomorrow? Well, we've done all the fitness work, we've done all the strength work over the past weeks and months, so there isn't anything in that regard that we can do today to make ourselves any faster for tomorrow. All our training has been done, we can't really do any extra today. You may have seen me on the ergo already, that wasn't to get me fitter or stronger for tomorrow, that's because I feel better if I do a little bit of exercise on a day, the next day I feel less flat. Some people prefer a complete day off before they race. Other people, like me, prefer to do a little bit of something to get the body, just keeping the body ticking over. So it's kind of down to you as an individual what you do on the day. Today for me, a little bit of steady rowing, a little bit of speed work, nice and easy, 
and then for the rest of the day I don't feel like I have to do something and I'm all agitated I'm nice and chilled out and relaxed which is really important prior to a race other people don't really get that agitated and are fine with an entire day off and they feel good in the next day so that's kind of you have to kind of look at what you want to do in the day before exercise wise but again fitness and strength wise it's already done you can't gain anything today so tomorrow will be a 1900 meter time trial in the morning a pre paddle before that and then seeded from there into a final in the afternoon side by side which will be my first side by side race in the single that i've ever done so the yam squad will be joining me for another first out on the Lamborghini name yet to be determined so it's going to be an exciting one tomorrow a fun filled day and lastly probably the biggest thing that you can do to get the best out of yourself for tomorrow is the planning so you can plan the food you can plan the timing of okay when's the race when am i pre-paddling when am i going to have to drive to the venue how am i going to rest after the races where am i going to rest all of that if you can plan that it takes a little pressure off you on the actual race day and it can just save you that little bit of energy, save you that little bit of stress and it, all you have to focus on on race day is the racing. So that can make a big difference too. And speaking of planning, like Brooke suggested, the women's world record 2K holder about visualization, that can really help as well. You can actually visualize the whole day or you can narrow it down right to a race. Visualize what the race is going to feel like. Visualize what the race is what what rates you're going to do how long you're going to take what moves you're going to make all of that stuff just to put your mind in the right frame just to think okay if i'm going to be doing this race if i want to do this race what's it going to feel like so that when you actually get to the race itself you're thinking okay i've already went through this in my mind it's just a case of executing and that is all it is really it's about sticking to your plans you can't really do anything that you haven't trained for you can't if you've not trained to break the world record it can be quite difficult to go and train and break the world record if you want to if you're, you're you've done the training you know the speed you're at so go out and do that speed don't try and do anything magic unless you've been training to do some magic and now i'm going to just chill out relax for the rest of the day and then get a lovely long night's sleep and then we're getting into race day fingers crossed jam squad and i will see you tomorrow And we've made it to race day, oh yeah! <laughs> Just had a lovely little pre-paddle there to wake up the body nice and early in the morning. A lovely, lovely day as well. Flat water, prime glass to apply some yam. Absolutely fantastic! So now a couple of hours to wait to get on the water for the time trial. 1900 meters as fast as we can on the track here at Dorney. But permission to film is yet unknown for the race itself so if i know before the race then i'll let you know but if not probably be after the race before i talk to you next potentially <laughs> maybe we will see but now between now and the race time the time trial i'm going to put some dry kit on I'm going to it's, it's a it's an interesting time for fueling because I've had a good breakfast, had my oats and all that jazz, but I don't want to eat a lot of food now because I don't want to be bloated and, and feel too full for the race and end up just throwing up everywhere. 
but I also want to make sure I'm fueled, especially because I've got another race after that. If I only had one race today, it wouldn't necessarily be super important, but I want to make sure I <laughs> keep the body fueled, keep going throughout the day rather than flagging after this first race. So it's a, it's a delicate balance of just kind of keeping the fuel tank not fully topped off, but just not really falling down, if that makes any sense at all. But I'll see you hopefully on the water. Oh, yeah. And we have made it off the water. The results are out. Jack here was the winner of the time trial. How was it, Jack? It was good. Did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. So Jack was the winner of the time trial. Initially, I came third, which I was quite happy with. And then um, I wasn't third anymore. I came ninth, I think. Ninth, because the timers, so there's multiple timers at each 500 and they read out the times and then write them down but the time was read out wrong so I went a lot faster, probably faster, in fact definitely faster than all of the pairs that raced for the first 400 so it gave me a good chunk of time off but unfortunately it meant that I wasn't in third place, I am in ninth place which means I'm in the B final and it also means there's going to be some side-by-side -side racing from Mr. Robson, who is not over there anymore. And Dale! And obviously Dale as well, who is part of the Scottish contingent down here for trials. So the Learn to Row pair will be coming together once more, but not in the original combination in two separate boats. And four we'll oars! <laughs> and four oars and see how we get on. So. After the race, really important just to get your feet up, have a little bit of re relaxation, get the get de-stress a little bit, and then try and build yourself back up again. So after the race, a really good tip is to get some quick sugars in just to combat the, the, the feeling of rubbishness. So for example, a little bit of honey, a little bit of jam, and some a banana perhaps, depending on what you like. Just a little bit just to get over that sort of the dip in the sugars that your body's going to experience after a flat out effort and then get into eating depending on how long you have before your race so i'm going to continue eating for me a little bit of time before the the first side by side race that i will have been done doing since 2019 december so it's been a while but hopefully i haven't forgotten how to do it and i'll see you on the water for the second race of the day oh, yeah.
Good job. Yeah, good work, buddy. Yeah, can. And that is trials finished with. Just packing up the boats. Again, a huge thank you to Hudson for letting me use the Lamborghini name yet to be determined. We're all packed up after the B final and came away with the win there and I'm quite happy with how I put the race together there. It was a different approach to the time trial. I planned on doing the same approach but ended up being just how the race unfolded a bit different. In the time trial I wanted to almost flat pace it based on my pieces from last week at the start camp. I felt really good a little bit lower in rate and I wanted to replicate that kind of thing. In the time trial, it felt, looking back now versus the side-by-side the -side final, it felt a bit too heavy and a bit too inefficient. Into the B final, I went off the start, I was down a little bit, and then it felt more efficient. It felt like I wasn't spending too much energy to get to where I was going, i.e. the finish line. And so instead of sort of settling and having the rate really shift down and just sort of trying to cruise through the middle. I stayed a little bit higher than I was, so I probably rated around 31, 32, maybe even a bit lower in the time trial. Probably averaged closer to 36 in this side-by-side -side final. A little bit that's going to be because you're side-by-side, -side, you can see boats next, you can see the speed they're doing, but there was a little bit of I'm feeling a lot more efficient in how I'm rowing. I was definitely rowing a lot shorter, that's for sure. So it's something to look at going forward of do I want to row a bit shorter, do I want to row a bit longer, what's good for me and what will work for me best because I am, uh, how I approach my ergs when I have PB'd, I have been rowing shorter so is that something I want to take into my single or do I want to change it a little bit and keep the length because I am tall, I do have long levers so I do want to take advantage of that but there are advantages of rowing short so it's something I have to look at. Let me know in the comments below if you have any advice on the matter. I think it's going to be a combination of the two. It's been a really big learning experience this weekend, especially the drastic differences of feeling between the time trial and the, the final. I don't think it's down to being side by side and being a time trial. I don't think there's much to do with that. I've, I think I've got enough experience to not be affected too much by that. But there's definitely a difference between the two pieces and I would really, obviously, as hindsight's 2020, 20, I would really go back, like to go back to the time trial and think and try to do the same as what I did in the, in the final because my heart rate actually ended up a little bit lower and so, but that could also be down to um, the case of fatigue and trying to, it's harder to get your heart rate higher when fatigued. So a little bit of that, but it's been an amazing weekend and a really big privilege to be able to come down from Scotland and get to get on the water and do some racing. Like I said, that's the first side-by-side -side race I've properly done in a single ever, as well as the first race I've done side-by-side -side in any boat in over a year, definitely, and almost over a year and a half. So it's been a while, and it's and it's and this is kind of the side-by-side -side race, and the, the racing we've done today is kind of why you want to row. If you've, if you've been training rowing, obviously a lot of us over the past 18 months have been doing a lot of training in the boat or on the erg and you want to get racing and you think that rowing is good well wait till you get out there and race rowing is even better and these are the days that you kind of you think of when you are struggling on the rowing machine during winter or or even at any point at all or you're just having a bad day on the water and you're thinking I'm 
I want to get to those race days and make those race days good with all the training that you're doing. But that will be it for today's episode, Yam Squad. Hopefully you've enjoyed the multi-day episode today. A little bit of a longer one. Hopefully the chapters down below let you sort of skip to the bits that you wanted to see and it hasn't been too laborious to watch. But, as always, Yam Squad, remember to subscribe if you haven't already hit that like button and I'll see you in the next episode, oh yeah!